This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I suggest we use it. Don't be too proud of this technological terror you've constructed. The ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of the Force. Don't. Well, about 30 years ago, uh, in the Baha'i community, we realized that the private sector is a dominant agent of social change. And the idea was, how can we reach out to the doers, the leaders, with our values, uh, inspired by the Baha'i principles? So I joined the BBF in January last year. Uh, the reason was because I was looking for a space where I could actually live ethical values and in somehow also learn how to apply that to my business and also my career in general. And I actually live it in my career, in my business that is in a startup right now and also in uh, my company where I'm working, even in my life and in ABBF, of course. Why do I bother? That's a really good question. Um, for two reasons. One is because everyone but everyone at the moment is calling out for something different in business everywhere you go students in corporates so at the time is right and we should be doing this and the second thing is it's actually a lot of fun uh, this organization is full of people doing great things bags of energy bags of ideas and i come away refreshed every time Here's why I think ethics is important in, in business. Uh, I've spent most of my life in automotive and today on the flight here I grabbed a, The Economist and there was multiple pages about this Volkswagen scandal if you want in, in the US and probably globally and I, I don't think there is a need to think about why is ethics important in business uh, the implications for the share value, the trust in the company, the, the, the future of diesel, the, 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 the German automotive industry, the, the rest of German, made in Germany, everything is being questioned. In the business world, I think we are still very focused on profits and very materialistic way of the running business. And I think in the BBF, I find that spiritual part that is compensating uh, the profit. Uh, let me tell you something about greed and ethics in business. Um, I believe actually that greed is a misconception. It's the, uh, um, how do you say it? The absence of knowledge actually. And what we've learned in working with uh, banking institutions and stuff like that is once uh, a new paradigm comes in, greed vanishes. Your power is a weak old man. You can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. So we had preliminary meetings in Switzerland. Uh, Douglas Martin, who became a member of the Universal House of Justice, was then in charge of the, the Public Information Office at the Baha'i World Center. So he was a facilitator. We discussed this with Erwin Laszlo at a conference in Paris, and eventually George Starcher, aided by Esa Zarayi, uh, called in the first founding conference in Chamonix, at the foot of the Mont Blanc. So it was a great meeting and there for the first time EBBF decided to get organized, registered eventually with bylaws. I come to EBBF conference because uh, there are thoughts of inspiration, motivation and uh, they inspire you to put in practice meaningful action. 
and I want to spread the BBF message, so I'm also part of the communication team in EBBF. So, well, uh, EBBF and business uh, ethics, uh, I think e EBBF supplies um, the tools or, uh, and, and the awareness uh, on ethics in business. Uh, so after a conference uh, like this, yeah, you get you get back to your uh, to your work or your job, and uh, you have a whole new mind on and a whole new awareness on uh, uh, ethics in business, and uh, yeah, you can start right away with it. You should not have come back. EBBF is that there's a focus on justice. I think most people at their core that attend this uh, conference have a feeling that justice is one of the key elements of having an ethical, uh, just world and using, you know, basically uh, implementing um, that concept of justice in their workplace, in their personal life, and things like that are very important. Speaking of ethics, this was the theme of the first conference of EBBF, which was held in Chamonix, France, in uh, many years ago. What year was it? <laughs> Quite a year ago. Years have gone by so quickly. At least 25 years old. Anyway, 1990 was the first meeting. Oh yeah. So one of the one of the things as your mentor was I was going to introduce you to fellow fashion industry people and these are the fabulous Anila and Shanan. Yeah. And we've already had some really inspiring conversations. I would just like to add that you know, um, uh, if we would have met last year, I wouldn't have been of much help to you. But this year, I'm well prepared because uh, since I visited EBBF last year, I collaborated with a huge textile firm as Gloria Fabrics, uh, which are the producers of raw material, uh, embroidery, and digital printing. And we do, we have a capacity to print as much as you want, and uh, we are looking for export partners for ourselves as well. So it would be my pleasure to be of any help to you. I've been coming to EBBY for this is my second year, and I suppose this is the most the, the best space for, for for myself to grow personally and also learn what other businesses are doing and to improve my business more ethically uh, and more community based. Wow, that's it. I already more than three years coming to the EBBF conferences. This year I was thinking, ah, again, no, I cannot miss it. But uh, it's just something I need that inspiration, that network, and it really confronts me every time with, yeah, the, the heart yes, and the values like behind what I'm doing every day. So it's great. Thank you. Okay, um, I think I was uh, extremely lucky to be part of uh, this group in the start uh, who wanted to built EBBF who had the idea of creating a new way to lead the, the business world and who had ideas, some uh, futurist ideas about what the world could be. So uh, as from the beginning I was involved and uh, especially for me also there was something particular which I thought was very interesting. It was the partnership between women and men. I was very lucky in uh, 1985 to be part of a group uh, of uh, Baha'is going for the international Baha'i community to a conference in Copenhagen, uh, halfway in the two days in East, uh, which ended up with a big conference in uh, Peking in 1995. So, uh, as from that moment, uh, my desire to see the women take uh, a lead in, uh, in the world uh, was very uh, important, it was very important for me. So I think that uh, that being part of one of the values of EBBF did that I have all over these years been very interesting to see the change and the growth of the EBBF and also see the number of women who are part of EBBF today. One of the issues, except for example, was the question of women. Not women um, as people or as people working in business, but 
even the very first discussion uh, was passed in, should we have a, uh, back in Chamonix was, shall we have a, uh, an organization for businessmen, uh, managers, for managers. And the whole discussion was of, about that. And yet, when we came to refine our core values, it was unanimously agreed that gender equality would be one of them. So, it, we, had lang we, we were trying to create language using the Baha'i teachings as the inspiration for creating a new discourse that really could be effective in the business world. Well, whatever she said is really inspiring because she really want, you really want to build up your brand in Kenya to, to bring your fashion line uh, to meet high-end people yeah. and as well as what I've understood is uh, you want to build up a printing uh, design textile, company, textile yeah. company there yeah. so that you can really print your stuff there and distribute amongst yeah. people in the, around the world. Yeah. So I think that's really like what uh, my sister and I are trying to do, really bridging the gap and be, even though she lives in Pakistan, I live in Switzerland, it's how we can get connected and East and West fusion can be created through fashion life and as well as to bring a strong story and a message behind uh, why we want to do that. I am Serge Tin and I come from Luxembourg. I live in Luxembourg. I've been a member of EBF since the very beginnings. I don't remember exactly the exact year, but 94, something like that. Um, why did I join Baha'i? How did I become aware of, Baha'i, of, of EBF? Of EBF? Uh, it's because I, I became a Baha'i in 89, so just a few years before. And so I discovered this whole, this, this, this whole world inside the uh, Baha'i community and the BBF was certainly one of the most attractive uh, things of, of, of that community because I was um, working in a job that I was uh, questioning um, the purpose of at those times. And e EBBF did what to help you? And EBBF certainly helped me continue that thinking. Um, it, it was, it, it took you know, when, when, I, when people ask me, uh, what are you doing professionally, I kind of gave, of course, the politically correct answers to that, but something in my, in my heart made me feel like, okay, the, the real correct answer to that might be, why don't I help my client cheat his tax system? And that kind of felt like um, not politically correct to say, so I didn't say it, but I, <laughs> but I felt it. So, and, 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 and it led me, in effect, to, to, to change to, to, to leave my job um, a few years after that. Um, so yes, it had a strong impact on, on my life. I met you all in 1974, yes. and we became friendly. George was president of a company, I uh, was consulting, and I was president of another company. So we used to talk about the business, but then we suddenly realized that it was neat that we could sit down and organize something very different, uh, that the objectives of business would not be only to make uh, uh, the balance sheet in good shape. So uh, we created this together, and then uh, ever since we've been uh, working together uh, for this, there has been ups and downs with the organization of the EBBF, but at least now we see 25 years later on, uh, the bunch of the people there, from uh, young people, that's probably in a few years time, they will become uh, top uh, organizers or middle management or whatever it is, uh, to uh, bring these values that we saw at the beginning uh, in, in conceivable to uh, materialize in their life. And I think it was uh, very important. At the beginning, it was very difficult. People never believed us. <coughs> I remember that. In fact, when I talked to the people, uh, business people around me, they would say that you are in the heaven. It's wonderful, but uh, practically, it's something different. And gradually, it turned out to become something uh, worthwhile. And then, I would like to say that many organizations created later on, but they all disappeared. Uh, quite a few of them are still alive, and I'm quite happy to see the 25 years uh, EBDF and not only lived but also grows and increased. Uh, when I saw all the young people sitting in the meeting, 
I was amazed. So I hope that the young people today will take over for future. So every day I commute around four or five hours to go to my current job in Milan. It's a lot in terms of, of commuting, you know, it's very stressing. I need to wake up very early in the morning, be in the office eight, nine hours and be back home late around eight, half, nine. But then I have my VBF calls with my, my team and I'm not tired. I'm actually, after the call, more energized than before. Then I can't neither sleep after that because I'm so refreshed, I'm so energized, I'm so, and somehow clean, let's say, from all the smog and the, the stress the job can give it to you. And, and somehow I, I feel like I can get another commuting day so to go to the job because I know that I'm doing something very good for the community itself and for all the impact that the organization can give outside. And, um, now I'm seeing some of the results uh, of the young people who started businesses as a result of uh, um, of coming to the EBBF and it's really exciting and there's more and more uh, uh, um, energy. Um, well I came back to EBBF because last year when I came it was such a good opportunity to meet people from different backgrounds who have different career and different jobs and I mean I'm, I'm a, I was a student now I finished my bachelor and it was a time where I needed to find my path so I thought it was a very good idea to come here. I came to EBBF I think about three or four years ago and you know I, I knew nobody in here and uh, right from the beginning I felt like I belonged I could feel the love in the in the atmosphere and I could also feel the sense of support and the willingness uh, to help you uh, to advance your idea so there was a real you know strong sense of community and yeah it just feels like you know you want to come back every time so at the event before the event, I think that's something we really need to take some time and go, how are we consulting very really well as a team, right? And the other, the related point I noticed was when we had our Skype consultations and then it got to the stage of going, that's a great idea, who's going to do it? We still fell into the trap of looking at people on the call, right? Uh, I came from Romania, I heard about it from a friend and I liked very much the theme. Um, what uh, I've learned uh, until now is that uh, the way to, uh, for the future, the future of work, is collaboration and uh, trying to f uh, solve uh, uh, the problems that the humanity is now facing on, the big problems. Diversity of people that I don't normally meet in my day-to-day -day life, which gives me a lot of richness of different perspectives on the things that are happening in the world, different perspectives on the things that I'm doing. The history has been quite an outstanding. We began in about 1990 in a conference held in Chamonix, France, and each year we have had meetings which have been in increasingly successful. I'm particularly happy with some of the activities that have been carried out with the youth. We have been very active partners with ISEC, which we met in one of our conferences. And this is an outstanding youth organization that uh, has been very close to us for the past eight or nine years. May I add something that uh, George was kind enough you know, to write about the history for the young people. And, uh, but this was written only very briefly from 1991 to 2011. And I do hope that uh, someone else, uh, first of all, I do hope that every individual, newcomers, will get a co copy of this somewhere, I don't know, a hat on the website or somewhere else. And at the same time, someone else would begin to write about the history of EBBF from the 2011 up to today that we are celebrating 21st anniversary. I've been a member of EBBF since 2008. I keep coming back in, uh, in these uh, conferences and uh, I keep being a member of this organization because of the inspiring conversation that I have. Uh, beautiful people and especially every time I come here I challenge my, my thinking, I challenge my way of perceiving things and I always end up having much more ideas and, and, and feeling more uh, energized and, uh, and in touch with the others and, uh, and uh, the, the community. So I really like it. 
This is our second year attending uh, EBBF. We learned so much and had such a great experience last year that we decided to come back. And what at least I'm hoping to do is to bring some of the ideas back to where we live in the United States and try to create uh, really a better uh, future, for, especially for, for business. Um, consultation that arises from everyone because we all share these values and um, I really like this morning that um, be before we started um, the facilitator of our group uh, reminded us the foundations of consultation and how to uh, have meaningful ideas coming from um, this talk so it's been really great so far. Give me that spark of hope that I don't need to go back into the old system of working and that there is hope to work in a different way where people see each other as people and human beings. So. First of all, one, one of the reasons we had the conference is our desire, as I to myself, to bring together some of our friends who are Baha'is on the one hand, and at that time uh, were interested in the ethical dimension of business into one location, which turned out to be Chamonix in France. And the reason for Chamonix is the inspiration we felt it came from looking at the French Alps at the same time we were consulting on making business more responsible. So I became involved in EBBF because I was asked to come to the very first meeting in Chamonix in 1990 and I went to the company of a friend actually but when I got there they elected me the secretary of the meeting, typical, have a woman do that job and so I got interested the next year, the other person who brought me didn't come, but I thought, I'll go, and it's, I've been a member ever since. George Georgia wanted me to become a member of EBF. It didn't interest me. It wasn't interested in business. I, I don't qualify. So they made me an honorary member of EBF, and then by my stick, I got on the voting list and I got elected to the board of EPPF without ever wanting to become a member. I'm happy I've been able to serve the organization, uh, but it shows the ways in which you have to push people in order to become active and take on a responsibility and see you that can be of service in an exciting organization like EPPF. My most memorable moment was the first one of EPPF, where Beppe Robiati back in 2001 invited me to present about CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, at a university course that he was holding in Bari. And the interesting thing is I never heard of CSR before, so it's really this deep immersion that EBPF gives you into themes that you may kind of heard about but not really immerse yourself into, and it makes you a protagonist. Not just hearing about it or just uh, touching base with it, it's really becoming really part of what's uh, new trends, new elements, and really being able to then express them to a wider audience. Uh, and in terms of impact, what keeps me going 10 years later, or 15 years later now, is really the impact that this is having on human beings. Uh, people that are not happy with the way their company, their organization is working, they're looking for a more meaningful and more impactful way of going forward. And what's interesting enough is that they find many other like-minded people at EBBF, and then together they really make change happen big time. Uh, we just launched a campaign, the EBBF uh, Impact Campaign. Uh, in just seven days, we received the impact of members around the world, and we had a number of 37,000 people being impacted in seven days. And it's really a small group of EBBF members sharing online what their impact has been. I can only dream of imagining if everybody actually put their down their impact, the millions of people that this organization has been able and privileged to serve and to impact over the years. Okay. What struck me when I discovered EBBF is how I could find solutions to my problem at work and use the publication to directly implement some processes in my work. And I found that wonderful to, to, to find very simple tools, very practical when I was living remotely abroad. Okay, so my name is Heike and I came to this session because I'm curious. I really don't know what to expect, but I think it made me really curious to hear about language and to explain things to people. I think that's an important topic and I want to learn more about it. I, I really like this sentence about William Drucker. The most important thing in communication is to hear what isn't being said.
and I think in the future managing the, the intangible is going to be one of the most important topics to, to get addressed. Yeah. Uh, I think it just blow my mind because now I understand that okay we need something some income but we also that the concept of service is basic to go on with this society. I think it was uh, very inspiring to learn of what things are happening in a, and how we're moving to collaborative and how that's forcing us to raise a new level of responsibility and understanding of how we work together and how we can do so many things that we couldn't do before. Back then the climate of business ethics was the business of business is business and therefore it's all for profit etc. Uh, we, the first things we had to deal with was the issue of corruption and how each one of us for example deals with that in our own businesses. Another issue that was important at that time we thought we could have some uh, impact on was the question of the opening of the Eastern uh, Europe. Uh, we thought uh, as these people are going to be looking for a new business model, we can make a contribution. Our first conferences were uh, systematically in Eastern Europe, many of them in Bulgaria, Albania, Romania and others. Uh, we also realized that uh, what we are bringing, especially at that time, was quite uh, groundbreaking even though we did not invent any of those terminologies. We did not invent CSR, we did not invent ethical business as an expression. But we had the courage of promoting them and knowing that many people will not take us seriously at the beginning, but now 25 years later, many of those topics are, if not mainstream, at least not taboos or don't sound weird to people anymore. It's really building this flow, always remembering the central focus is how much of the members is the BBF community. The BBF accompanies individuals to change the world, to create a more sustainable society. So this is whatever we do every day. Sustainable, prosperous and just. I just cut it down to where uh, just the basics. Yeah, so this is why I presented this and that's why we naively mm -hmm. feel more comfortable about for every team this two year thing. Mm -hmm. And I repeat, the thing that really sparked it was Jason's comments about yeah. burning out and also the comments of the people wanted to step into teams saying this feels like we're not this is an established uh, group mm. that does not allow things right and wrong the second group the perception is um, I'm from New Zealand and uh, this is the third time that I've been to EBBF. I keep coming back because EBBF connects me to what is real in the world and what is important. Uh, I primarily come here for all the great conversations outside of all the official programs uh, and occasionally I also pick something up in the programs. Um, and the other reason I come is because it's a really loving and encouraging environment to explore um, new ideas but also insecurities and not knowing and so that is a great place for me to be. Just reflecting about the history of EBBF and how we got to where we are now and thinking of the days when it first started, just this little handful of people who came together, really just to discuss whether it was even possible to put the word Baha'i in the same phrase as business. That was a big discussion. It wasn't known uh, business wasn't a, something that was kind of on the agenda for the Baha'is as a, as a group. And so just that, even that little discussion was something that was quite challenging and interesting to see how that could work forward, go forward. Um, and then of course there was a kind of resistance in the business community. Really? Can you have a discussion about religion? Can you have a discussion about faith? Can you have a particular discussion about religion and faith with the word Baha'i on it that nobody's ever heard of? These are kind of difficult things. And that was also a cultural issue. Some countries it was easy, in some countries it was not so easy. And the people who were involved came from their different cultures and they really expressed their ideas according to how they understood their culture to be. So that was also quite an interesting discussion to have. But as time moved forward and the world moved forward, some of those issues were really overcome. Uh, the concept of spirituality at work was completely unknown. But when we introduced that idea among ourselves, uh, we began to talk about it, 
it gradually became, I'm not saying just because of EBBF, but the times changed and the whole concept of spirit at work, spirituality at work, became an issue that everyone could talk about. Similarly, the, this concept that we used to call as one of our core values, that business has a responsibility to the wider community and not just to the bottom line, became the concept of corporate social responsibility. We didn't have that language ourselves, but we were happy to adopt it because it really did share the values that, that we had here at EBBF. Yeah. One of the things that uh, I remember from the early days is that when I was studying, I get myself a hold of a book. I don't remember where did I get that, but it completely changed my mind about leadership and, and management and it was called Managing with the Wisdom of Love. And then I came to these conferences and I couldn't believe myself that I was shaking hands with the author of this book, Dorothy Marty. And now I, you know, I'm here, she's interviewing me, I, I can do this. <laughs> to the author of the book, that I, I was so inspired throughout my life. That task was given to EBPF uh, by the Universal House of Justice when it said two things. One, you should get to the table of business leaders, and the other one was the agreement that we should learn how to take the teachings that come from the Baha'i Faith and put them into the language that the business community sh could understand and accept. And that's really been the, the, the task that we've had right along. I was wonder whether it can continue. We are seeing other organizations which uh, gradually existed and developed and then suddenly disappeared. I was wondering whether we could continue. So the membership has shifted dramatically over the years. Um, and, the, and, the, and as more young people have come in, and particularly young women, the culture has changed. The first time that I heard about EBBF was in 1992, when I first became a Baha'i. And because I'm not actually a business person, I thought that sounds really interesting, but I, I'm going to do something else. And um, I met my husband in 2001, who happens to be a business consultant, non-Baha'i, and I thought, hmm, how do I get Ralph in, interested? Um, we talked about EBBF, and then eventually, a few years later, we went to uh, a conference in Newport, in Holland. I think that perhaps the more important um, thing about the EBBF, at least for me, is, is meeting these amazing people who share really their knowledge very generous with others. And, and I really like this because I'm learning from it and I'm trying to add some value also to it. My challenge of these days was that when I taught the people uh, in business field, Chamber of Commerce and so on, they would all agree, wonderful idea you have, but practically speaking, things are quite different. Uh, so I would tell them that gradually these things will become a reality. And today I think it is not surprising to talk about the CSR. But in the early days, if you talk about CSR, people will say, Are you not from this world? The first con conference I've ever been to where the topics were actually interesting. Um, as a technician, normally what you do is arrive and find out where the coffee or the beer is. And uh, at EBBF, I find out where the sessions are because I know I'm going to be in them all day. Um, and not because I'm trying to avoid anything, but because they're actually interesting. We both were in the business, so we knew exactly what was going on. George was in the consulting and I was in running a company, uh, which turned out to become a multinational. I think on the other hand, business ethics and corporate social responsibility have been growing quite quickly and we've been able to take a leadership role in some activities. Certainly in the academic community we're finding increasing courses and interest in both business ethics and in corporate social responsibility. It's been a 
very, very inspiring morning with lots of impressions and I feel like the little boy in the classroom that Gary Larson drew and he's raising his hand and says, teacher, teacher, my brain is full. <laughs> Well, there's really no other place to go other than this conference. Uh, it is by far the best conference I've attended, uh, Baha'i or, or business. I'm a business professor and I've uh, never attended a conference as exciting as the EBBF conference. I've been at EBBF more than 10 times now and I keep coming because of the environment that I find here. I find it extremely nurturing. I have so many mentors and so many really uh, loving friends that I always look forward uh, to meeting. And uh, it's a time when I can slow down and think about all the wonderful things that are happening in my life that I might not be appreciating until I've slowed down a little bit and reflected on them and consulted with uh, my lovely mentors here. I had been close to retirement at that stage in my life, therefore I was able to devote a considerable amount of time to the development of EBBF and this is a great interest to me personally, personally in part because of the quality of people that we have been associating with in the process of building this organization. All right. Well, Your Highness, guess this is it. That's right. We had the idea, but then we never thought that there were so many other people who had the same idea as well. You, you might know, like, uh, thought we never expected that in Chamonix that we would have so many people coming. Uh, um, uh, some of Actually, Chamonix was a fairly limited group. Yes. Aside yes. what were 20, 18 or 20 yes. people. Yes. And so it was more than we anticipated. But it turned out the degree of interest was very keen. And what we were really seeking was approval of that group to move forward. The, the, this life-changing part of EBBF is not discussed very you know, often, even though we keep bringing in people, conferences like this, many of them knew to the, all of the stuff which is going on, and they, when they come here, when they, when they get here and they meet all of these beautiful people and they get inspired, their life literally changes. They go back home as a different person. And this is something that it's really hard to put in a book or a brochure or a, or a video that what actually happens. But I'm, I'm one of those people who I'm not the same one anymore. I'm doing different stuff. And, and uh, I hope that people whose life EBPF has been you know, part of changing would come out and tell their story to EBPF so that more and more people would be, you know, somehow put into fire about the, the cause what we have here.
So I came to your house one summer yeah. and you told me about EBBF. My wife introduced me to you. Yes, I remember. I because remember. she met you in Paris when she ah, declared okay. as a Baha'i. Yes. And you told me uh, not to declare as a Baha'i and to go and supervise the children in the swimming pool. <laughs> so I declared as a Baha'i, I joined EBBF and I did take care of the children. I also. <laughs> I, 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 that was not, that was not oh, important thing.